Hello. I'm doing this video to kind of preview, review, whatever. The coming fight in December with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Now, if this fight had taken place when before Fury was banned for steroid usage and uh, cocaine usage, I think I would have leaned more towards Fury. Although not a lot more because Fury has been known to be clipped with that right hand. And Deontay Wilder has arguably the best right hand in heavyweight boxing today. Probably in the whole of boxing today. Now, even though I said I would have leaned more towards Fury a couple of years ago, when Fury gets this, loses his focus, he can be had with a right hand and drop with a right hand. A cruiserweight dropped him with a right hand, but... Cruz, I think this cruiserweight weight weighed over 200 pounds at the time of the fight, so plus he has pretty good punch anyway. Joe Lewis would have fought at cruiserweight. weight. Jack Dempsey would have fought at cruiserweight weight if he was around today. And dare anyone say that he couldn't drop fighters of the day, no matter how big they are? Look what he did to Jess Willard. Six foot six, 245 pounds. Anyway. Fury, if he keeps his focus, even now, I don't know how ready he really is for Deontay Wilder. He seems to think he's ready. But if he's at any of, uh, towards his peak, coming back, we'll see after his second fight with Francis Pinetta, Pinetta, whatever his name is. Though Pinetta is just that, a Pinetta, some of the Mexican, uh, hanging Mexican stuffed animal to beat that, that you beat until the prizes fall out. But anyway, we'll see where he's at when he fights Pinata. If Fury is at is is um, in shape enough to do what he did to Clisco, he'll have to really keep his focus, keep moving. Um, he'll have to switch from time to time to confuse Deontay Wilder. He'll have to throw a lot of double jabs. He'll have to um, faint a lot and to get that right hand off and get out the way. He's not going to be able to stand in the middle of the ring against a Deontay Wilder. He'll have to move. To, uh, he'll have to utilize all the ring space and keep it moving. If he can do that, he just might pull up, the, pull out the biggest upset of the year against uh, uh, the, the. It'll it'll be a bigger upset than um, this Cuban fighter who just knocked out Kovalev, no, the Colombian fighter who just knocked out Kovalev. On the other hand, if Fury loses his focus even for a split second or less. He'll find himself on the canvas. And unlike the other two times he was knocked down, I don't if he gets back up, Deontay Wilder will finish him. For all you want to say about Deontay Wilder, he's one of the best finishers I've seen in boxing. That is, if he doesn't start throwing windmill punches that that Fury can easily duck under after he's hurt. Fury is a fighter, he's an ex-champion. And he has the will to win. And, I, and the way um, Deontay Wilder has knocked down some opponents. And then when they stood up, he started windmilling. That's not going to work against um, Fury. Fury will, get, will dodge out the way and come back if he does that. But if Deontay Wilder kind of puts a little thought into what he's doing and knocks Fury down and Fury gets up, Fury's a done deal. What does Deontay Wilder have to do to beat Fury? Well, he's going to have to do a lot of double and triple jabbing. And he's going to have to feint himself a lot of feints with the jab. Once he establishes a jab, and once Fury starts tasting that jab, he's going to have to feint some with the jab and try to force and try to get Fury to move to the right side for that right hand. He also, if, you're, if, you, if no one's looking, paying attention, Deontay Wilder has, has a hell of a left hook. 
He's finished some guy. Who was I can't remember one of these guys he fought. He finished with a left hook. He also everything he right and left hand. He has good punches, good punching power all the way around. Good uppercuts. Also, he could fake that left hook like uh, Luis Ortiz did in his last fight, and then shoot that right hand. He could hit. Uh, Fury to the uh, throw a, a left to the ribs and then come with that right hand to hit hit Fury with the jab with I mean with the left with the um, hook to the ribs to move him over towards the right side and then shoot that right hand. He can also do what Joe Lewis did. Uh, had a D D O it's D O A dead on on your ass punch where he would throw. Um, a left hook to the body and then shoot that right hand real quick coming up. I saw on YouTube a film of Joe Lewis knocking out the Cinderella man himself, Braddock. And he didn't even hit Braddock with the left hook to the body. He just kind of brushed him with it or brushed by him with it. And then he shot the right hand real quick. Knocked Braddock completely out. And Braddock had a good chin. I think Fury has a decent chin, so I think if um, Deontay Wilder does that move to Fury, he'll probably knock him out too, cold, just like Lewis knocked out Bradley. Especially if he throws it quickly, like a tricky secret, right? Like, you know, you faint that left hook, then shoot it real quick, bam, on a button. I think Fury will be knocked out, perhaps, one punch. Um, he can also, this is what I used to do when I used to spar all the time and in my tough man competition. I would throw a jab to the body and then quickly shoot the right hand up to the chin. I knocked a couple of guys down like that. And when they got up, I stopped them. You know. Sometimes when I spar, I started boxing in 76, 1976, I was like 11 or something. And back then, we tried to kill each other, the guys. And the trainer had to stop us. So, it was no, t if you if you stun a guy or knock a guy down accidentally, you halt. You put him out. When he got back up, you try to finish him. Unless one of his trainer, your trainer, stops you. Um, there are a lot of th there are a lot of things Deontay Wilder can do. He has he does have a good jab, and he's gonna have to utilize that jab all night, all twelve rounds, or however long the fight lasts. He's gonna have to utilize that jab to the head and to the body. Fury, being a man who's six foot nine, that's only two inches taller than Deontay Wilder at, at six foot seven. But Deontay Wilder is gonna have to punish that body too. With Deontay Wilder's power, if he punishes that body, Fury's hands could drop and then he could be open for a right or a left hook. Maybe Deontay Wilder should try to catch Fury switching from left to right. But he does it so good, so so very good. I'm not going to say he does it better than anybody but, but middleweight champion uh, Marvin Max middleweight champion Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler did it so effortlessly. You didn't never see it. But Fury does do it well. And if you're not watching real close, you'll be fighting. Well, yeah, first, you think you're fighting an a orthodox fighter, then you'll be fighting a softball. Don't even realize it. I, I um, fought two softballs. Well, sparred with one and fought one. And a tough man. And I was the first one. I, I, I was um, hitting this guy. I, 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 every time I used my jab, nobody could get out of, out of the way of. I had a real good jab. I'm six foot five. So very few people back then were six foot five. They were like six foot five nine, even six foot two, six foot one. A few were six foot three. And the ones who were as tall as I was were not as heavy. I weighed like uh, 240 pounds. These guys were like 200, 225, 220. 
And and uh, no one got the way of my jab. But this guy, for some reason, all the time I jabbed him, I got jab, I got hit back with a jab. And that normally didn't happen with me. Because I normally was out the way or I knocked their heads back enough to throw that right hand. But I discovered, it dawned on me, I'm so stupid. It dawned on me by the second round, the guy was a softball. So, oh my God. First one, I, I, I swear I will. So what I do this softball, well, I kept the jab going, but then I started throwing right hands. I didn't know that you uh, caught a softball. The softball was susceptible to orthodox straight right. It just started happening. And when that started happening, I got the guy in the corner, and, and I just bombarded him. And his trainer stopped us because he was trying to get ready for an amateur match. And I was just in the gym. I never, never, you know, never, I never fought amateur, but I, I sparred with pros and stuff when I was uh, like 15, 16. So I don't know. I just I never took it seriously. I just wanted to be able to fight enough so that shorter guys wouldn't get out on me because I had guys that fight me. I had a lot of fights in school. As a matter of fact, that's how I got into boxing. Um, I heard a guy in school fighting and the principal sent me to a social worker and the social worker sent me to a gym. So, but at various times I was going to turn pro, but I messed the first time up and I went into, um, I started training shoot fighting when I was 30. And I was getting ready to turn pro because I had to look real good at Tough Man here in Cleveland, Ohio. And um, stupid me, I got into uh, shoot fighting, which is like a Chinese, Japanese version of catch wrestling. And I was just starting and I got my shoulder injured. I then had a Tough Man fight and the first guy I knocked out, but I tore my shoulder completely out. I think I tore it out and, and also... It was uh, dislo dislocated, so I went all the way to the finals, and the g and I was in a bathroom, yelling kinda, and they my trainer put um, some uh, a hot pack on that show. They were trying to get it together. By the way, Cecil Shorts and Ted Davis trained me for that tough man, a famous Cleveland trainer. I think his son or grandson plays football, basketball, baseball, or something. So, I went back out and got to the final, and the guy who I fought in the final was good. He was a good boxer. And he just stayed to my right because he knew I couldn't throw it and not point at me. So, uh, I went to Tough Man searching for him, and I found him in a tough man. He won his first match, and I won my first match, but when he saw me, this tough man was like, he fought one day and then you came back to fight the rest of the fights another day. He didn't show up because he knew I was gunning for him. So he didn't show up. That's the only man I ever lost to. Period. In the streets, in the ring, anywhere. Though I never turned professional. I should have. But um, somewhere along the way, somebody seduced me into becoming a correction officer. And I wasn't making any money and I had a handicapped child I had to take care of. So I gave up my boxing, which I was never really serious about. I just wanted to be able to fight in the street, which I had so many street fights. I was tired of fighting anyway. I just wanted to get myself to the point where I knew I could whoop anybody's ass. Um, and that's why I got into the shoot fighting or catch wrestling or whatever you call it. Or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I got so good in that that I grappled with a lot of BJJ guys and I just took them out easily and then catch wrestling easily because although I'm not a high, I'm never a high school wrestler I learned to wrestle doing a more we did more wrestling more like twin dragon style where you know like the the coach teaches teach, teaches you one move and teaches the other guy. Um, how to counter that move and then you just go at it until you learn. 
my coach was Marcus Marinelli, who was uh, who who was uh, Stipe Maotic's coach today. Back then, the only people that taught shoe fighting and catch wrestling was um, Tracy's Karate, because Bart Bell had been a long time Tracy's Karate student, and when he came back from Japan, he um, started teaching catch wrestling in in the Tracy's Karate's, and that was the only one in the city that taught it. So later on, Marcus Marinelli went on to become the head trainer of his own school gym, Strong Style. And that's and when I see Stipe Maochik box and, and and grapple in UFC, I see myself almost a mirror image. But anyway, with that said, getting back to Fury and Wilder, do I have a prediction? I don't know. I'm not gonna predict anything, but. With Fury being out for three years, Wilder should have a KO. I'm not going to say an easy one now, but I think he'll beat Fury now. But if Fury is in any shape that he was three years ago, if he's close to it, that is, he has a very good chance of outpointing Wilder. Because on the face of it, Wilder has one way to win by knockout. Fury has two, by knockout or by decision. The only way I can see Wilder decision in Fury is if he knocks him down a couple of times and hurts him, and and uh, which would have Fury more of defensive than offensive. Then Wilder can outpoint him. Uh, I can see Fury outpointing Wilder just by moving around and switching from left to right, from softball to orthodox, orthodox to softball, and just using his ring generalship. So we'll see in December who wins this Fury or Wilder. Thank you.